You're saying she was meant to die in this crash? I don't think so. I think that it could have been prevented. And this is why. <laughs> You know, I told y'all I was going to be back. I'm back in today's video. Hold on. Hold that thought. Make sure you have your coffee because I have my coffee. So good. So good. Anyways, um, in today's video, we're going to get into the behind the scenes of the Aaliyah epic plane crash that ended up taking her life. I always wanted to know what happened to Aaliyah. I was seven years old when she passed away. That was like one of my first times dealing with death, having a conversation about death like with my mom and um, it was it was really really sad and it, it hurt instantly when I heard of her death and I just wanted to do this video because I literally watched the documentary Losing Aaliyah. I watched that last night on Tubi and I also did some research. Y'all already know how I get down. So I did some research as well. In the documentary there was a lot of people talking about Aaliyah and you know saying their experiences and how they felt when she died. So I thought I would do the same thing as well as talk about the facts and what might have led up to her crash the main thing i want to expose is a lot of the red flags that were happening around this crash okay so if you guys are ready let's get into it we're doing this about Aaliyah. make sure that you like comment down below and you subscribe to this channel for more videos it's going down okay i grew up of course listening to hip-hop listening to Aaliyah loving Aaliyah's style like her flavor i loved what i loved the most is that she was very sensual but it was in like a mysterious um homegirl kind of way and i always wanted to be like that when i got older i was like i want to be like that i see myself like that like she dresses like me and my sisters with the with the like oversized sweatpants and i was a little girl but i still dress like that like oversized sweatpants and crew necks and and jersey shirts and stuff like that like i grew up dressing like that so she just seeing her on tv it just reminded me of myself like really pretty nice skin you know baggy clothes very gorgeous very like chill a chill like girly slash tomboy vibe that was like my first time you know seeing someone on tv that i felt like looked like me and my sister is someone that i felt like i could identify with because she was young as well she was of course she was older but she was still young she was like you know she was making it and i felt like wow like if she looks like me and she on tv i can make it too so we're going to get into the actual details about the crash before i get into it all of this is public knowledge i looked this up on the internet okay in an article and in the losing Aaliyah documentary if you haven't seen it it's on tubi right now in the music section of the movies so just check it out we all know that she was you know debuting her album Aaliyah at the time of her death it was highly anticipated she was working in the bahamas doing a music video for rock the boat which i love everybody loves that song rock the boat was what she was working on right before her death so she had to go to the bahamas we all know the bahamas is like a smaller island there's a lot of like planes going back and forth but you know it's it's very small so you can't you know bring you can't pack a plane where do i want to start because there's so much stuff going on she wrapped the video up and she was set to go back to miami later that night she had a deadline the next day so she had to be in miami um so as the story goes is that you know they were waiting for the plane the plane took two hours to get to them and her entourage was starting to get upset about it. And, and this story is coming from 
Kinsley Russell, who was working with Aaliyah, his family had a taxi company in the Bahamas, so he was a Bahamian man. At the time, he was 13 years old, so he was helping her with her bags, and his mother was like her driver at the time. So this is what he was saying from his own words, is that, you know, the plane was taking too long, her entourage was starting to get upset, and when the plane finally came, Aaliyah expected it to be much bigger, and she didn't want to get on. And because it was so small and because it had too much stuff to get on the plane, she didn't want to. So she got in the taxi. She got in the taxi and she was refusing to get on the plane. And then she was having a headache. She had a headache and she wanted to take a nap. And someone gave her a pill in her entourage. And this is like a mystery pill. No one knows what this pill was, but whatever it was, it knocked her out and made her unconscious. As Mr. Russell says, that she, you know, quickly fell asleep right after taking the pill. And all I'm going to say is that Advil and Tylenol don't do that. Even um, a leave PM don't make you just fall asleep right then and there. So I don't know what that pill was, but it, it put her to sleep and they they carried her on the plane asleep, as Mr. Russell says. He says that she was unconscious. They literally grabbed her, and I'll read it in his own words. He says that she went on the plane asleep. He said they took her out of the van. She didn't, she didn't even know she was boarding the plane. That's what he said. So, they literally carried her on the plane while she was unconscious. She was on the plane. She didn't even know. Everybody got on the plane. And um, because it was 700 pounds overweight, the plane went up in the air 60 to 100 feet before taking a nosedive right back down. And the plane crashed. And everyone died. Eight people in total, six people died instantly, and two people died in the hospital. Things that, that I wanted to get into, like, that's a little bit more intricate, because that, what I just said was something I never heard before, is that she was being slipped a pill. I had no idea that she, she had a pill, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, evidently, you know, I believe Mr. Russell, I believe he's telling the truth. And because kids don't lie and things that you see when you're younger you remember that I believe everything he said it makes sense because the the entourage was getting upset I do believe that they slipped her a sedative to make her go to sleep because they knew she wasn't having it they knew she wasn't going to get on the plane she didn't feel comfortable and she was already you know anxious and um, scared to get on a small plane as any young woman probably would be so the things that I caught behind of course with this mystery mystery pill is like the first red flag so the next part of this is the 700 pound overweight okay so this could be contributed to how many people was on the plane, how much the people weighed individually in combination with camera like um, accessories. The cameras itself are heavy. Uh, even my ca my Canon PowerShot is pretty heavy. So I can't imagine like having all of your equipment from a video shoot on an airplane and as well as people and luggage so you have to think about that and this is this is extra the 700 pounds is extra weight you know what i'm saying so you have to think about how much the people weighed individually and add all that up then you have to add the luggage itself like all the clothes all the shoes and stuff that she had from her video shoes all the luggage and clothes that all her entourage had then you have to um, actually add in the equipment from the video shoot was on the plane as well. All of that is heavy. Lights, camera, action. You know what I'm saying? All of those things are heavy as well. So if you're saying 700 pounds overweight and you're talking about a little paper plane, like one of, like this plane looked like 
nothing compared to what it, it was supposed to be, you know. And we're talking about Aaliyah, a superstar. She should have never been on a plane. She couldn't carry all of those things on as well as those people. To be honest, some of those people could have got on a different plane. That would have took some weight off the plane right there, you know. If not the people, then the luggage. The luggage could have been on a different plane. If not the luggage, then the camera shit could have been on a different plane. There was different ways that this could have been done. And I just don't feel like it was her time to go. I feel like a lot of people say that when people die young. And it's not a nice thing to say. To say, like, someone, it was their time to go. So you're saying she was meant to die in this crash? I don't think so. I think that it could have been prevented. And this is why. The mystery pill, that's red flag number one, okay? Then you have the 700 pounds overweight plane, and the plane is like paper thin, you know, because it couldn't have been but so big coming to a small island like the Bahamas. A lead investigator actually said it's premature to blame the crash on too much baggage just yet. I still have to weigh one more bag found in the swamp as well as weigh the passengers on board reaching a conclusion. That's what he said. He probably said that right after. But my thing is don't make a statement until you figured everything else out. I would have just said no comment. Anyway, so we have how many red flags do we have? The that they gave her, her entourage gave her. We have the weight of the plane. Then we reach another red flag, and that's the actual pilot himself. So the pilot was not actually even authorized. The pilot's name was Luis Antonio. He was not authorized to fly a commercial airline at all. He actually was just recently um in court for possession of crack cocaine as well as stealing airplane parts okay so he was not even supposed to be driving or steering this plane i don't know how else you say it not qualified you know y'all know that video in new york when when she was like you're not qualified to wear those shoes said that those shoes were meant to be worn on a beautiful woman so if that's the case she should have put them back on the rack and she should never even purchase them because she was unqualified. Like he was not qualified to get behind this plane and and take anybody anywhere. Allegedly, when he did get to the Bahamas to pick up Aaliyah and her crew, there was a dispute and an argument. And he did say that there was too much stuff on the plane. And the entourage and him was going back and forth about it. But the flight ended up clearing for takeoff. He ended up taking them anyway, physically getting, putting them in, in the plane and taking off. So I feel like it was his responsibility to buy the plane. Do I feel like it's possible that he was paid or a handsome amount to keep, to keep like the flight going? Probably. But if that was the case, he still, because of the, think about it, if the entourage gave her a pill to knock her out, to basically shut her up, to put her on the plane, I don't know what else lengths they would go to just to reach this deadline. I don't know what was the deadline, but they, at this point, I feel like they probably coerced him into, you know, doing this. And he still should have said no. He still should have said no because you know, he put his own life in jeopardy as well because he did end up dying in the plane. So that's another red flag is that the pilot was not qualified at all. And he actually had crack and alcohol in his system at the time. Whether he consumed it that day or he consumed it in the last 30 days, he still had drugs in his system and he should have never, you know, been sitting in that seat taking off even though i will say that the plane was overweight so that people could blame it on him all they want to but i really feel like it's really no telling though that's the part about this that seems really really bad and that's what makes it so scary and um and you know a lot of people say since situations like this are doomed i think that's why they say that because it's like even if the plane wasn't overweight, it's like he still had crack and alcohol in his system. Who knows what would have happened if 
the plane didn't crash immediately. It might have crashed anyway. But if that's the case, then she might have survived it if the plane wasn't overweight. So I don't know. Next red flag I would say is the record company. Now, there was someone in the documentary, and I don't think he wants his name to be revealed, but he is someone that was, you know, actively in the business and he made a strong argument, a strong point, and he basically was saying, like, that she should have never been on some, you know, um, paper-thin plane. You know, he used other adjectives to describe the plane, but it had me thinking, and he was like, she's a, a superstar, like, she's making millions of dollars. She should have never been on a plane that was not suitable for her to carry her own luggage to carry whatever she needed you know what i'm saying if anything there should have been more safety precautions taken for her and um, because she was like he compared her to you know in the black community he compared her to like our princess died should have been more safety precautions taken for her because she was so special to us and um he said that he thinks that the record company just dropped the ball and was being cheap and I agree I agree with that as well I feel like she should have never had to squeeze all of her all of her luggage and the and the video shoot equipment on one plane as well as herself and her entourage I think that that's ridiculous I don't know what was going on with this label I don't know because I know that she was connected to her uncle's label but she was still on Atlantic Records and I haven't heard good things about Atlanta Records at all, um, especially with how they're doing Young Boy right now. So agree, I agree totally that she had money. She should have never been on that plane. She should have been on a nice jet, cause that wasn't even a jet. Like she should have been on a nice jet. It should have just been her and maybe a couple people. You know what I'm saying? And and that's it and maybe her luggage and that's it the camera equipment and stuff all that stuff should have never been on the plane like that's ridiculous none of that should have been on the plane and she should have been on her own private jet and i think it would have been fine so i totally agree with that guy and what he said and he also made a good point about dame dash and he said like why why didn't he get her a jet like he's on jets private jets with jay-z at the time you know him and jay-z were very close you know on rockefeller records or whatever and he was saying like why isn't um why didn't he get her a plane like that's what that's what your man is supposed to do you know they were supposed to get married yada yada so for him to like not check on her or not not help her not you know, not not even help, just do what a man's supposed to do. Like, that's kind of weird, too. Um, and I, I have never heard him say anything about Aaliyah, like Aaliyah's death, um, publicly. And maybe it was because it was so hard for him to get over, as I could imagine. They seemed happy, but I don't know if it would have lasted long, because he's just... <sighs> I like his personality in a way because he's very a very strong black man but at the same time like he's too much in a relationship no no way but anyway he did make a couple good points about you know she should have never been on that plane um it was the record label's fault they were being cheap i agree with that too i i agree that the record label has some responsibility with with that with her because she was their artist, they should have taken more safety precautions and they should have cared more. I strongly feel like the record label should have had some responsibility and they dropped the ball on that. One of the last things I want to talk about is um, a month before her death, she actually did an interview and she talked about a dream that she had and I'm going to say it in her words. She said, it is dark in my favorite dream. Someone is following me. I don't know why I'm scared. Then suddenly I lift off far away. How do I feel? As if I'm swimming in the air, free, weightless. Nobody can reach me. Nobody can, can touch me. It's a wonderful feeling. Um, 
Of course. Like, when you hear that, and then we all know how she died. As soon as I read that, I was like, whoa. Like, whoa. Like, it's kind of, it's really interesting and eerie how people say things like that right before they pass away. It's really, really interesting. Um, I... As soon as I read that, I was like, whoa. Like, especially when she says, like, then she she suddenly lifts off. And she's weightless and she's free. And nobody can reach her. Nobody can touch her. And I'm just like, whoa. Anything about the air, like, anything that she said about the air, it just made me feel like, whoa. Like, I don't know, man. That it's, it's a little too close to say that it's not about what it's about. You know what I mean? It's, it's, um, it's very telling. It's very telling. And um, I don't know. It's like she might have been going through some things at the time. And she just wanted some space. And you know what I'm saying? Maybe she just felt like it was too many bad people around her or whatever. But to say that a month before she actually died in a plane crash is is really cryptic to me and i caught what the doctor the this doctor um raju said that she had a generally weak heart and that even if she would have survived it would have been nearly impossible for her to recover because she would have been in a state of shock um because of everything and um who wouldn't be who wouldn't be um who wouldn't be in a state of shock after being in a plane crash and so and I can't even imagine her surviving and I mean I can imagine no let me take that back I can imagine her surviving this plane crash and maybe it's because I've survived something really dangerous too and it's possible I don't like when people say that it's nearly impossible it's possible anything is possible I know the plane crash was really bad I know it was horrible I know that if she would have survived, she would have never been the same. Um, but I think it's possible for her to have survived this plane crash, um, even as bad as it is, just because God works in mysterious ways and he can make things happen that you would never expect. So I don't know. I don't see, I can see her definitely surviving this crash. Uh, I do think that it, it is interesting to hear that she had a generally weak heart because, and I know that they mean that technically, like on the inside, and I, th I think that means something too because a lot of people that have heart issues or heart problems or um, even breathing problems, I feel they're very nice, kind individuals very loving individuals people that i feel like have heart problems or you know have holes in their heart or anything like that they tend to be generally really really sweet you know genuine people and she was definitely one of those people very humble very down to earth very much not phased by the by the glitz and the glam of it all i really wanted to talk about this after i seen this documentary because i didn't see this before and i didn't know a lot of the things that i know now and knowing what i do know i feel like it's possible that she could have survived this plane crash if if it wasn't for the the pilot if it wasn't for the luggage if the record label would have paid for a, a larger plane or even even separate planes or because back in those times like in the early 2000s the the label still controlled a lot of your money and and put money here or there everywhere and if the if it wasn't for the pilot if the plane wasn't overweight and if the record label or damn dash would have paid for a plane or or two then I feel like she would have probably still been alive, you know. And if she definitely didn't have that pill from her entourage, she probably would have not gotten on the plane at all, too. I think that was one of the, the hugest parts of it is that pill. What was that pill? 
why did they give it to her? Um, it wasn't for a headache. It was to knock her out, as far as I'm concerned. You can tell me your thoughts below, but that's just what I think. So many factors that are involved in this. Why was the flight cleared to, um, to take off? Why was the flight cleared to take off if the pilot knew that the plane was overweight? Like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? Was he was he paid off? Because if he on alcohol and, and, and crack, he gonna take the money. But was he paid? You know what I'm saying? So many factors, you know, that goes into this. But I just wanted to do this video. Y'all know I miss y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. And I'm here. This is a good video. I'm excited about this video. I have more coming up soon. It's your girl Umbrella. Make sure you like, comment below, and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Because we're going to talk about conspiracies. We're going to talk about it all, okay? If you're ready for this year and for this content, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!